Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Edmund O'Brien in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a true story as we dramatize the diary of a man whose unfortunate task it was to set down a report on the death of his friends. Ordeal in Donner Pass. Our star, Mr. Edmund O'Brien. Well, hello, tomorrow's the day. Yes, Senator, the day when a lot of people will step on the starter and find that their batteries are as dry as a campaign speech because they forgot to keep them properly filled with water. I mean election day, Harlow. Right, right. The day when thousands of wise drivers will elect to get an Autolite stay full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. I'll vote for that. And that Autolite stay full is a long time in office. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give that conscientious candidate longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. So, friends, after you vote, visit your Autolite battery dealer, the expert on all makes of batteries. To quickly locate him, phone Western Union by number and ask for operator 25. I'll tell you where to get an Autolite stay full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Ordeal in Donner Pass, starring Mr. Edmund O'Brien, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. My name is Patrick Breen, and I'm a God-fearing man who loves his family and tries to do right by his fellow man. If in the months that followed after we started to take the Hastings shortcut to California, if in those months from November of 1846 to March of 1847, I was selfish, there were men guilty of worse. I'd done what I was able. I'd done what was the most any man could. If we had have read the signs right, it wouldn't have happened, maybe. When Keysburg left the old man, Mr. Hardcoop, behind to die. When Snyder attacked Mr. Reed and Reed killed him and got banished from the caravan, sent out alone without wife and child. If we saw the signs of losing all those cattle in Truckee Meadows and the Indians sneaking up and killing half the rest, we would have seen the hand of nature working against us. and the crazy task of clearing a road through the Sierra Mountain wilderness by hand. Thirty miles of road. We should have seen the signs. But the Donner Party only saw Missouri where they came from and California where they was going. We didn't see in between. Well, what's the trouble? What's the matter? Something go wrong again? Mr. Eddie is for trying to get over the pass again. Oh, I say it's crazy. Temperature must be near to freezing. And it gets worse near the summit, up near the pass. Oh, I got my wife and children to think about, Mr. Donner. And so do I, Mr. Graves. And think about them. Don't stop here. You'll save your lives if you don't stop. It's colder and colder, Mr. Eddie. I tell you, get out of these mountains now. We'd have to leave most of our goods behind. And leave your goods. Leave our goods? As well, leave our money. And your money. You talk madness, Mr. Eddie. What would we start our lives with in California? Don't be fool. Mr. Eddie, you'll make trouble for yourself. Look at the health of our party. The exhaustion, Mr. Eddie. Look at it. I'll look at dead bodies if you don't move on. I know. I know that. But it's always been what could happen. Only some of my children, they complain... They need rest in a regular camp. And mine, too. And my wife. The last bluff we lowered our wagons over, we didn't have the energy to keep them right. Someone crashing down, supplies and all. The men just don't have the heart for it. You'll die. There's no going back to the Salt Lake. Some died there already. Try. At least try going over the pass again. Hastings' route was a pack of lies. We'll take another route. Look up, Miss Daddy. Look up to the face of the summit. Snow. Solid snow. No marks or signs. It's snowing again. And if we stay, it'll swallow us up. And look at the faces. Human bodies can only work so much, Mr. Graves. And no more. Only so much. Uh, It calls for a vote. No. 
Not yet. I you vote. No more argument. It wastes time. No, you gotta listen. We gotta talk some more. You gotta understand. Take your hands off Come me. Come on, stop it. Stop it. All right. All right, call your vote. Call the vote, Mr. Breen. Listen. The question is, do we go on for another try over the pass or stay? There's no going back. Mr. Donner? To stay. Mr. Graves? To stay. Mrs. Reed, with your husband gone, you are the man's vote. To stay, I suppose. I don't know. I cast no vote, Mr. Breen. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Kiesberg? We built three houses. One was already standing. The Graves family next to the Reeds. Our family and Keysburg's next door. The Eddie and Murphy families in adjoining cabins. And five miles down, the Donnas. No windows and one door to each cabin. And like sentinels from October 31st, half our slaughtered oxen, dressed and ready, split in half, stood frozen next to our cabins. On Friday, November 20th, 1846, I began my journal. We now had killed most part of our cattle, having to stay here until next spring and live on poor beef without bread or salt. It snowed during the space of eight days with little interruption. The remainder of time up to this day was clear and pleasant. Freezing at night, the snow had nearly gone from the valleys. Hello! My wife, my children asleep. They could not have attempted the crossing with Mr. Eddie, who started out with 22. My wife thought it better to wait. Hello! Where are you? What? What is it? It's Mr. Eddie taking a group for another try. Oh, I wonder. It's no time for doubt. But doubt can mean terrible things. Do you think they'll make it? Uh, I have no facts to go by. Mr. Eddie's a courageous and a daring man. Will they make it? It's only a feeling, and it's the only guide we have. Will they make it? I say no. On November 26th, I slaughtered my last team of oxen. After this beef was gone, maybe Mrs. Eddy would sell me some of hers. There were some mules, there were dogs... And we waited. Monday, December 1st, snowing fast, wind west, snow about four or five feet deep, no drifts. Looks as likely to continue as when it commenced. No living thing without wings can get about. Tuesday, December 2nd, still snowing, wind west, snow now about five and a half to six feet deep. Difficult to get wood, no going from the house, completely closed in. Eight days of storm and not seeing or hearing a word of life or death. Snowbound so that even the people in the next cabin were like a thousand miles away. We couldn't get out to kill the pack animals, and after the sixth day, our ration was barely enough to keep a baby alive. And then the storm stopped. We got to have meat. I'll go out. Slaughter the mules? Aye, the mules. Here. Help me with these boxes. The door is jammed. Step aside now. When I pull back the last hide, snow will fall through. Mr. Graves? They're gone. They're gone. What are you talking about? We didn't tie the stock. They ran off the stock. Oh, no, no. They couldn't have gone far, not in this storm. Uh, they got to be here. Look for the tracks. The tracks have been gone, covered up. 
Oh. We should have tied them. Yeah, we should have tied them up. Uh, I can't dig anymore. Mr. Green. Mr. Graves. Bayless Williams is dead. Will someone help take him from our cabin? Graves, will you help? I cannot. I gotta save my strength. I cannot. Come, Mrs. Reed. We'll give Bayless Williams the final rest, poor man. Mr. Breen, have you any ox meat for my children? There's almost none. A little. Just a little for my children. We have children too, Mrs. Reed. Sorry. It's starting to snow again. I'm sorry. And getting colder. Maybe we should call him fortunate, Mr. Williams. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Edmund O'Brien in Ordeal in Donner Pass. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, who do you think will win tomorrow? Why, the man with the auto light stay full battery, Senator. You just can't lose with that rare, rugged, and reliable battery that states right on the case. Needs water only three times a year in normal car use. But both candidates have an auto light stay full, Harlow. Then they have long-term power insurance, Senator. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking. And give that auto light stay full longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Yes, but who are you voting for, Harlow? Why, for my Autolite battery dealer. He's the expert on all makes of batteries. And if a replacement is needed, he'll recommend an Autolite stay full. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. To quickly locate him, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. That's right. Call me Western Union Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Edmund O'Brien in Elliot Lewis's production of Ordeal in Donner Pass. A true report, well calculated to keep you in suspense. Maybe you say it was cruel of me to turn aside, Mrs. Reed. But I had eight mouths to feed. She only had five. Figuring life and death in numbers. What else could we do? December 31st, 1846. Last of the year. With God's help, we spend the coming year better than the past, which we propose to do. Berger died... Reinhardt also. If only almighty God will deliver us from our terrible situation, which is our prayer. Amen. Morning. Cloudy again. Wind east by south for three days past freezing hard every night. Looks like another snowstorm. Snowstorms are awful to us. Snow is so deep now. So very cold. Some of the children too weak to get from bed. Nothing but hides in the children's starving dog. Sunday, January 3rd, 1847. Freezing at night. Wind about east. Mrs. Reed talks of crossing the mountains with one of her older children, leaving others behind. Provisions scarce. I have no right to ask you. But it's for their sake I must go. No, not alone, Mrs. Reed. With milk. No. And Eliza and Virginia. Ten strong mountain men couldn't do it now. I must, I must. There isn't enough for all of us. Can I leave James with you? I'm going for bread, Tommy. To get bread for you and everybody. Shh, child. 
out of town. To the Graveses. Will they take him in? I can only ask. Will you help me take him over? Hurry, hurry, Mr. Breen. For God's sake, hurry. Mrs. Reed? The fine and dandy Mrs. Reed? I only ask you, with some charity, take in my baby, Tom. We got nothing to share with the son of your husband. Cut out your tongue, Mr. Graves. This isn't your concern, Mr. Breen, none of it. I've taken in James. And it's your bad luck. How can you talk so selfish? For all of us, one problem, all to help each other. We're more alone than ever, alone. And the man who fights the hardest wins his life and life for his family. You ask a price? There's still some animal hides on the roof of your hut. I thought to share them for all the children. And let the others care for your precious baby. Mr. Breen? He can have some of them you give me. And there's silverware you brought. A foul mind and a foul body. No fouler than the stink of your own cabin and living like animals. But you become one. And then there's a golden bracelet my wife saw you wear. You can have it. And fine linen cloth. Any of them. Enough! Shut up! You ask for another thing and I turn my hand against you. I'll kill you if you ask for another thing. Please, Mr. Breen. I I, I got all I want. I, I got all I need. Monday, January 4th. Mrs. Reed, Milt, Virginia, and Eliza... Started about a half hour ago with the prospect of crossing the mountain. May our God of mercy help them. It was difficult for Mrs. Reed to get away from the other children. Friday, January 8th, wind east, froze hard last night. Very cold this morning. Mrs. Reed and company came back this morning could not find their way on the other side of the mountain. They have nothing but a few hides to live on. From January 10th to the 14th, it snowed without stop. Difficult to get wood even after the storm broke. There is little energy for much but sitting. Saturday, 23rd. Blew hard and snowed all night. The worst storm we experienced this winter. The sun came out a while. No sign of any game. No birds. No Indians. Even they leave us to our fate. January 31st. Landrum Murphy died. The sun don't shine out brilliant this morning and it froze pretty hard last night. February 21st, 1847, we sat in our cabin. The hides was rotting from the heat inside and snow on top of them. But even those we boil and eat. We hear from the Donners up the trail. Old Jacob Donner is dying. Many were dying. Patrick, how, how long can we last? Not long if all we talk of is death. What was that? Something, something's happened. Gone mad? Have, have some gone mad? Oh, no, I think it's more. Who, who, who are they? Who? Are we saved? Oh, God, dear God, are we saved? Hello there. Are you, are you an angel or are you real? Oh. We're real. My name is Rhodes. Oh. Who sent you? How have you come to us? Uh, Reed told us. He got us to come. Reed? The man we banished, God forgive us. The man we cast out. You, you, you brought food. Some flour, food. some salt. We had to leave a lot behind. Enough to get us over the mountain? 
How many are there? Maybe 40, including children. But well, don't you know for sure? Every night there's less. We hardly see each other for days hey, at a time. Keep that man away from the pack. I want food. Flour, I'm going to have food. You'll kill yourself if you eat too much. Put a guard on the food. I'll give, we'll give out what we can. Not all of it. There's got to be enough left to go back. For how many? Maybe, maybe 20 of us. Not all of us. Well, all of us go. None of us will make it. Twenty-four went with the brave seven men. We were left with no more food than we had when they came. And those who were left moved into only two cabins. We lived like animals then. We was little more. March 13th. Now I remember the day by counting it out. But I hardly knew then. I can't stand the filth. The smell. We'll we'll freeze if we go outside. Build a fire on the snow. If, If the others help, we can. At least not to live in a room with the dead. (laughs) We come from built up country and cities. We didn't know that to build a fire on snow, you got to cross tree trunks and put the fire on them. We built it on snow, and it cut a well into the snow. We all moved down to it, like a cave. We was too weak to move from the wet ground, too sick to care. At least it protected us from the wind. Fourteen of us was all that was left alive. My wife Peggy, Mrs. Graves, and her baby... What did you have there? No, nothing. Nothing. You, you hid something under your shawl. I, I didn't hide anything. You put something to your no. mouth. No. Uh, no. You got some no. food. No. You... You've been holding out some food. Go back, Peggy. Leave her be. I, I won't. Under her, her shawl. No, stop, stop now. Get it back. Get it. Get her mark, mark my pain. It's only a bleached out bone, Peggy. She, she ate all that was on it. She, she, uh, Don't, Mrs. Graves, don't. She, she held out. It was only an empty bone. It had been boiled over and over. Held out. An empty, empty bone. Held out. Empty. Mrs. Graves' baby died that night, and in the morning, her five-year-old son. Life went from her altogether, and she died by the time the sky was light. We did not have energy to take them out of the pit, because we didn't have no energy to get out ourselves. There was 11 left. Close to 90 started. Half died. And on the sixth day in that cave of snow in the ground, sitting like animals in the mud, not caring or even hearing. I can't pray. Don't. No more. Don't say that. You see anybody about? I can't even remember my prayers. Hello? Anybody here? They, They come back. Call. 
I got to call them. in that place five months. We left the camp. We will never forget. Some of us were selfish. We will never forget that no matter what we'd done that was wrong, a lot of us tried to be decent. I'd done what I was able. I'd done what was the most any man could. April 1847. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Edmund O'Brien. Harlow Wilcox again, speaking for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment, in 28 plants from coast to coast, where Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, boats, and industry. These products include horns, bumpers, recording thermometers, and batteries, such as the famous Autolite Stay Full. Ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, both standard and resistor types, voltage regulators, wire and battery cable, Autolite bullseye sealed beam units, and Autolite original service parts for all Autolite electrical systems. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. So, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, a true story taken from Captain Walter Kerrig's Battle Report, Korea. The facts concerning the mine-clearing operations in Wonsan Harbor. Needle in the haystack. Our star, Mr. William Holden. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Ordeal and Honor Pass was adapted for Suspense by Arthur Ross. Featured in tonight's cast were Paula Winslow, Mary Lansing... Charlotte Lawrence, John Daner, Joseph Kearns, Harry Bartell, and Parley Bear. Edmund O'Brien may soon be seen in The Bigamist, co-starring Joan Fontaine and Ida Lupino. And remember next week, Mr. William Holden in Needle in the Haystack. You can buy Autolite Stay Full batteries, Autolite Standard or Resistor Type spark plugs, and Autolite Original Service Parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.